Last year, we got a chance to try out Mercedes-Benz Drive Pilot Program on a track in Germany. Well, now we're going to try it again, except we're going to do it in a city that's forever linked with traffic, Los Angeles. So now we're in the vehicle, we're in an S-Class, and we're on our way to, well, bad traffic. We're looking, we're actively hunting for bad traffic, which is, um, well, when you're in LA, I mean, you, you don't have to hunt for it. It comes to you. Mercedes is initially offering Drive Pilot in Germany on 8,197 miles. It is a geofence system, but the automaker is hoping to bring it to the United States and is actively working with California and Nevada to hopefully bring it here by the end of 2022. Since our time in the vehicle in Germany, they have been making uh, adjustments to the system, as you would expect, but they're also working on getting it ready for the United States, which means making adjustments to, well, for example, the trucks here. You know, they're different sizes than the trucks that you would see in Europe. And also the fact that people pass on the right here in the United States. That's a big no-no in Germany. And cut-ins. Well, you know, when people cut you off, Turns out, uh, America, we are the leaders of cutting people off. Uh, I don't know if we should be proud of that, but that's that's a thing. There's, there's someone who's doing it now. He's going so fast. Now, what makes Drive Pilot different from everything else on the road is that everything else in the United States is level two. This is level three. That means that the driver doesn't have to pay attention to the road when the system is enabled. They could read a book or watch a movie or even play a video game, but they'd still have to stay in the driver's seat and they still have to be able to take over control of the vehicle in case the need arises. We're currently on Interstate 5. We're doing 65 miles an hour. It's too fast for drive pilot though. We need to be doing 40 miles an hour or lower. We have to actively be in traffic in order to enable drive pilot. Right now we're using Mercedes-Benz regular adaptive cruise control, lane keep and assist, their driver's assistance system, which is actually really, really, really nice. Um, but once we hit some traffic, we go under 40 miles an hour, we'll be able to engage it. But there are some other caveats. You have to be on the highway. The weather has to be nice. It can't be raining. It can't be freezing. And you can't change lanes. You have to stay in your lane while drive pilot is enabled. But I don't think you'll really care if you can't change lanes, if you're able to text and watch a movie or read a book or play video games because the car is driving for you. As you're using the system, uh, white means that you you are in charge. You are the person who's driving this vehicle. And then as you move up the levels, you go up to level two, it does tell you that adaptive cruise controls is on. And so that that turns green in the uh, the dash cluster, but there's still this you know other things that are white. Then once you get to a situation where you can use drive pilot, you can tap the buttons that are on the steering wheel and then everything fades to green. And then once it's all green or turquoise, once it's all turquoise, then the vehicle is uh, driving. So as drive pilot disengages or is about to disengage, it, it warns you, gives you an audible visual warning. And then it also tells you why that it is disengaging. So as you take over, it'll say, for example, uh, It'll tell you that the vehicle ahead of you is going faster than 40 miles an hour and it's pulling away. Um, and at that point, you need to take over the vehicle and of course, speed up because people behind you are probably very, very angry. If you're trying to enable it and it determines that the part of the road, maybe you're not on the freeway, maybe, you know, for whatever reason, the road isn't suitable for drive pilot, it will tell you, it will tell you in the dash cluster, hey, it's, the reason this isn't being enabled is because the situation is not set up for this. So we're currently in dry pilot mode. We're just stuck in LA traffic as you would expect. If you are in dry pilot mode and you want to take over, you can grab the wheel, you can turn it, you can press the button that is on the steering wheel. There are actually two buttons, one on each side. You can use the accelerator, you can use the brake. Um, you know, all those will take over drive pilot. If you are using dry pilot and you're watching a movie, reading a book or whatever, every once in a while, it will tell you, it will remind you that at any moment, you might still have to take over driving the vehicle. It is a friendly reminder that even though the car is driving for you, at any moment, you might have to take over the vehicle. And when you do have to take over, you have 10 seconds, essentially. The first five seconds, not much happens. It's just telling you, you'll get an audible, audible and a visual cue to take over. 
But then after five seconds, the vehicle starts to slow down. Uh, it will come to a complete stop within your lane. And then the hazard lights will come on, the doors will unlock, and it'll make an emergency call because the vehicle, Mercedes-Benz, believes that after 10 seconds, if you have not taken over the vehicle, you have become incapacitated. So if you have a heart attack or if you faint or you just pass out in general, the vehicle does all this in order to, well, keep you safe. In addition to the sensors that are in the vehicle and, of course, in the front, there's also a sensor in the back. There is this camera and a microphone. Now this camera is set to keep track of blue light for emergency vehicles. That way it's always tracking. If it does see an emergency vehicle behind you, the system will tell you to take over so that you can pull over and get out of the way of the emergency vehicle. There's also a sensor in the wheel well that tracks water. So you don't try to use dry pilot in the rain. Again, you're not supposed to use this system while it's raining. So we're watching a video, well, the driver's watching the video while we're driving down the Interstate 10. You could watch a video. That's the thing you could do with dry pilot, which you should never, ever, ever do with any level two system. Those systems, I don't care if whatever it's called, I don't care if it's hands-free, none of those, none of the level two systems on the road should be used with you not paying attention to the road. Level three though, with dry pilot, you can actually do that. Now this is really built for um, traffic jams, which, well, that makes sense because that's the worst part of driving is being stuck in traffic. And if you're stuck in traffic, you're losing time. You're wasting time. Things that you could be doing at your home or at your work or anywhere else, you're just stuck. With dry pilot, you're getting that time back. So if you're stuck in traffic on the way to work, you can reply to all the emails you need to reply to. On the way home, you can reply, you could text your, your friends and say, hey, let's meet up later, maybe eventually when I get out of traffic. So that's what the, the sort of level three promise is, is the ability to get back time that you may be losing in traffic, which is, again, the worst driving experience. In order to achieve all this and to have the safety that Mercedes-Benz requires for its vehicles, there are redundancies. There are redundancies to steering and to braking. So if something goes wrong, you still have something that will steer and brake the vehicle. There are also additional sensors. There's LiDAR on the vehicle. There's extra radars. There is an additional ECU that helps take the data from high definition maps, live high definition maps and GPS in order to place the vehicle within inches in its lane. Now all of this, it doesn't all necessarily part of a regulatory system, but it is what Mercedes believes makes this system very safe. And if for Mercedes, if it's not safe, they're not going to do it. And they're very into the idea of having these redundancies and making sure this entire system works well, because if something goes wrong, Mercedes-Benz will take liability. They do say that they are liable for what happens while the vehicle is driving itself. If all goes to plan, you might be able to buy an EQS or an S-Class in California or Nevada that has real level three driving capabilities. For more automotive coverage from the gridlock of LA, be sure to subscribe to Engadget.